We put so much emphasis on Santa and, and all the Christmas stuff and we get so pumped up about it and even with Christmas trees and things like that. And it's not bad to, to do that. But we have to truly remember the reason we do what we do and the reason we celebrate Christmas. And so tonight, um, I'm going to read the Christmas story to you all. And again, I'm going to ask you to be real still and just to stay focused just for a few minutes, okay, on, uh, on what I read. Now, I know that there are people in this room who unfortunately you probably may not get to celebrate a Christmas meal like we had tonight. Unfortunately, you may not have the opportunity to hear the Christmas story read because it's not a tradition in many homes. And um, so we wanted to start a tradition and we did last year with having the party and I, I wasn't able to be here due to being sick, but I would like to start the tradition of being able to sit down and read the Christmas story with you all, okay? So I'm going to start tonight. I want you guys to listen up and just pay attention just for a few minutes, okay? It says, this is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Now, in today's time, it's nothing uncommon for teenage girls to wind up pregnant. But back then, it was frowned upon very, very highly. Very, very highly. You just didn't get pregnant unless you were married. Okay? And so Joseph and Mary were engaged. Mary was, I don't know, I've heard many different ages. I would say she was anywhere from 13, 16 years old. Okay? She was a young lady, a lot like many of you all. She was engaged to be married, and she got pregnant. Not by Joseph. But the Holy Spirit did something that the Holy Spirit has never done before. Mary got pregnant by the Holy Spirit, and in her womb was Jesus, okay? The Son of God. Now, I'm going to try to give you a background. I'm going to try to teach you for the ones of you that may not understand where I'm coming from and make this as simple as I can. We believe in Jesus Christ being the Son of God. He was born by an earthly woman but He is the Son of the Heavenly Father. Okay? So there's God, there's Jesus, and there's the Holy Spirit. Sometimes you may hear it referred to as the Trinity. Okay? And I'm not going to try to get real deep with you, but the Trinity. And so the Holy Spirit got Mary pregnant with Jesus, the Son of God. Okay? So here we go. Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace. He had in mind to, diver, to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins." All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. And the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and he took Mary home as his wife. But he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. So I'm going to stop right there and I'm going to let you know that what has happened so far is Joseph, a righteous man, the Bible says, a man who is highly respected by others, a man who lives his life to the law, is engaged with this young lady named Mary. Mary winds up pregnant and Joseph thinks, she's been cheating on me. She's done me wrong. She's pregnant and people are going to look at us and make fun of us. So Joseph wanted to leave her, and he was going to do so, but he loved her so much, he was going to do so quietly. But an angel knew that this was going to happen, and so an angel came to Joseph, and he said, Joseph, do not leave Mary. She is pregnant by the Holy Spirit, not by another man. Stay with her, and when she bears a son, name him Jesus. And that's exactly what, what Joseph did, okay? 
After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, a magi from the east came to Jerusalem and they asked, Where is the one who has been born? <clears throat> I'm sorry, I lost my place. Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all of Jerusalem with him. When he called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet was written. Now check this out. This was written way, way, way back. Check what it says. It says, But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. So years before this even happened, it was prophesied that the birth of Jesus Christ would occur in Bethlehem, and nobody thought anything about it. And then all of a sudden, when everything started falling into place, it all made sense. Now it talks about a king and his name was Herod. And Herod was a hateful man. And he was extremely mad, extremely ticked off that Jesus Christ was being born. He did not like it at all. In fact, he wanted to kill him. And we're going to read more about that, okay? Then Herod called the Magi secretly. The Magi are the wise men, okay? Secretly, and he found out from them that the exact time the star had appeared... And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for this child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. Now this was his plot. He told these wise men, Let me know where Jesus is, Orin, and when I get there I'm going to worship him. But truthfully, he wanted to kill him. And he was going to if he found him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Now I want you to check this out. If you get anything from this tonight, catch this next part. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, the wise men returned to their country on another route. Now we can go on and we can read in the book of Luke, and it gives us another description about the birth of Jesus. It even talks about some shepherds in that illustration. But what I'm going to tell you guys tonight is, First of all, stay with me just for a couple of minutes, okay? The real, the real meaning of Christmas and the reason that we worship and the reason we come together and the reason we teach what we teach and the reason we sing what we sing and the reason we do what we do is because there was a man who was born into this woman. His name is Jesus Christ and He is the Son of God. And this man, Jesus, he lived for 33 years upon this earth before he departed. He would teach in synagogues. He healed people. He would make the dead arise and the lame walk. A lot of people didn't believe him. A lot of people did. But very, very few followed him, much like in today's time. So this man was not just a prophet. This man was not just somebody important. This man was the Son of God. Now each of us that are saved are known as the children of God. But none other, none other has ever been like Jesus Christ. It says that He sits at the right hand of the throne with His Father in heaven. Now guys, I don't know about you all, but there's none of us in here that will make it to the right hand throne in heaven. Jesus Christ was the only man in flesh to ever walk this earth that never sinned. The Bible says that each and every one of us has sinned. All of us in this room. Some of you think you're perfect, but you're not. The Bible says we're all a mess, but Jesus never did. 
Jesus was not just a man. He was the Son of God. So now that I've stressed to you how important this is, I want to ask you something. In the Bible, it says that the wise men, they followed a star and they found Jesus and they offered Him gifts. What are you giving Jesus tonight? What are you giving the Son of God, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, the High Priest, what are you giving Jesus tonight? You see, for a lot of people in here, Last week you raised your hands and you said you like to give. You like other people to be blessed. The reason we do what we do as staff members and youth workers is because we like to give away to you guys. We like to give of our time and our energy and our prayers because we like to invest in things that can be eternal if you allow them to. But what are you guys, what are you girls Investing into Jesus. What is your gift to Him tonight? Does anybody in here have something they want to give to Him tonight? Because see, we could give Him praise. We could give Him honor. We could give Him glory. And that's definitely what He deserves. But can I tell you that this King of kings and this Lord of lords that was born in a manger, He was born in a barn in a feeding trough, He was born there wrapped in some extra cloths that they had. Okay? He was born in an extremely dirty place. The King of kings and the Lord of lords who was born in this filthy place. This is what they brought him. They brought him gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And can I tell you that two of those three gifts, the frankincense and the myrrh, are something that bring dead people. That's something that you would put on a body once somebody died and they put you in a tomb or in a grave to keep you from stinking. (coughs) Back then, they didn't have the advanced technology that we have now to embalm somebody to allow their body to stay in good shape for years and years and years and years. You immediately begin to decompose the second you die. In fact, some of us are decomposing right now because it's a constant evolution in your body. And because of that, our bodies stink. So when you die, you begin to stink even more. And so to keep the stench down in the tombs and in the graveyards, they would pour perfume upon these bodies that are rotting. But they brought frankincense and myrrh to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Carissa, the, the Jesus Christ was born and they brought Him something they would bring a dead man. Do you know why they did that? It's because they believed and they knew that 33 years later, that man Jesus, who was born of a virgin Mary, would give His life on the cross for you and me. And the greatest gift that you can give Jesus Christ tonight is not gold, and it's not frankincense, and it's not myrrh, and it's not your car, and it's not your iPad, or your iPhone, or your boyfriend, or your girlfriend, or anything else, because He's not interested in that. The only gift that you can give Him tonight that He is interested in is you. Guys, He wants a relationship with you, and He loves you. He's interested in your problems. He cares about your relationships. He cares about what's going on at home with mom and dad. He cares about your schoolwork. He cares about your problems with your friends. He cares about the ones of you who are struggling with somebody you've lost recently. He cares about that. God is not so minute that He doesn't care and doesn't think about even the simplest of problems, Destiny. He says if it's important to you, it's important to Him. And so everything that you are dealing with and everything that beats you down, He cares about tonight. And so guys, Jesus is here. You just haven't seen Him. But in fact, He's been here all night long. Did you feel Him when He came by and served you tonight? 
Did you feel His hand when He touched your shoulder as He walked by? Did you feel Him? Did you feel Him whisper words of encouragement and words of love over your life as He passed by? Did you feel it? Because He's given to you all night long. But what will you give Him tonight? I want to ask you guys just to close your eyes and bow your heads just for a minute. And listen, I know that some people are getting ready to have to get up and leave to go be in part of a, of a youth auction, but y'all just stay still just for a second, okay? Nobody moving, nobody getting up for anything, nobody looking around, acting silly. Just give me just a couple of minutes. Tonight, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, He wants something from each and every one of you. He wants your heart. He wants a relationship with you. He wants to hold you. He wants to wipe away your tears. He wants to be there while you cry yourself to sleep at night. Because he, he desires you. And just as those precious gifts were brought to Him and laid down as those wise men approached the manger, they knelt down in reverence to Him and they laid those precious gifts down at that manger for Jesus. Some of you all need to find Him and seek Him to where you can walk up to Him and kneel down at the foot of the cross. Any man could have died, but only Jesus got back up. He wasn't just a normal man. He wasn't just a prophet as some religions see Him. He was the Son of God. And this Son of God has something for you tonight. This King has something for you. And so what I'm getting ready to tell you about is a free gift that I am offering to you tonight, not from me, but straight from the kingdom of heaven. And His name is Jesus Christ. And the free gift, you can either accept it or reject it, but it is free and available to you. Should you tonight choose to accept this free gift, here's what you would be saying. Jesus, I've realized my life is a mess. And I know that I've got sin in my life and things that are keeping me being from all I need to be. Jesus, I know that I struggle and I know that I've got hurt in my life and I know that I'm a long ways from where I need to be. But tonight, I give you me. And I give my life to you and I give my time to you, and I give my heart to you, and I give everything about me to you tonight, Jesus. And when you do that, His free gift of mercy and grace and love will come into your heart, and when you give that gift, you will receive another gift, and that is called eternal life into the kingdom of heaven. Will you choose to accept that gift tonight? Will you choose it? I'm telling you about a free gift readily available to anyone in this room who chooses to accept it. Should you choose to reject it, it may very well be the last time it's ever offered to you. If you need to speak with a counselor or a staff or somebody, you feel free to do so. I'm going to ask nobody else to move unless you need to speak with somebody. This altar is open. And if you need to come pray, you come find yourself in this altar.